Isaiah 61, verse 1. We're going to use a lot of scripture, right? So might as well get used to it, right? We're used to that. I love it. Amen. The Spirit of God is upon me. Listen to what it says. Uh, the Spirit of God is upon me because the Lord hath anointed me to preach the good news, tithing unto the meek, and he hath sent me to bind up the broken heart, to proclaim liberty to the captives and op the opening of the prisons to them that are bound. Verse 2, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. Say with me, acceptable year of the Lord. And the day of the vengeance of our God to comfort all that mourn. All right? Now notice this. Jesus rose up in the book of Luke the fourth chapter, was in the temple. He opened up the scrolls, and this is exactly what he opened up to the Pharisees and the Sadducees in the book of Luke in the New Testament. This is exactly what he said. He said, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he, the Lord, hath anointed me to preach good tidings to the meek. And so we find the ministry of Jesus Christ right here. This is the ministry of Jesus Christ right here. But I want to show you this, and I want you to see this, and we repeated this, repeated this. It says in verse 2, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. To proclaim it. What is the acceptable year of the Lord? Very simple. The year that we accepted Jesus Christ, right? We accepted Jesus Christ. How many of us have accepted Jesus Christ into our heart? We have all accepted him. That is the acceptable year of our Lord in our lives when he came into us and made us come alive. But not only alive, he's going to show to the world that he is king. The day's coming, church, that all I will see Jesus Christ. Amen. You ought to say amen, right? Amen. So in other words, if I may say it this way, when Jesus opened up this scroll here in Isaiah, he found himself. Oh, Pastor, he was Jesus. I know he was Jesus. I know he was Jesus. Now remember this. As a child, he grew up just like you and me. Mama and Daddy taught him well. Right? But he was something special. Oh, but yet he was human just like you and me. Amen. He knew no sin. Jesus knew no sin and was in sin and became sin for us. Amen. Hallelujah. So we find out that at this very moment, Jesus rises up and right when he proclaims this, his ministry shot off. Right when he proclaimed it. Right when he made a demand to this. This day is this scripture brought before you, he told them. Right? So at that moment, he recognized, man, this is it. And from that moment on, you, you, can, you will never find Jesus taking a back seat. He was always about his father's business, right? And so there is a work that Christ has given us. But you can't do it on your own. No flesh will ever glory on this. I mean, I, I fix cars and I thank God for that. I used to fix cars and I have the knowledge to fix cars, but I give God the glory. I now uh, work on things in the church and broadcasts and all that good stuff, and, but I still give God the glory, right? Russell, the same way, right? You're a musician. He knows sound system. He knows this and that. It did a miracle with, with what we needed him to do with our videoing of our conference, but yet he gives God the glory. See, it takes the glory of God to come on you to do what he wants you to do. No flesh can do it. Now, I'll tell you this. You can climb a tree in the natural, and it doesn't take the Spirit of God for you to climb a tree. You can drive a car in the natural. It doesn't take the Spirit of God. Well, in some cities, you need the Spirit of God. But, <laughs> you know, uh, in this city, it, you know, you can, you can drive a car and it's all right. You don't need the Spirit of the Lord. People are doing it up and down the road, right? But when it comes to the things of God, when it comes to the things of God, you need the glory of God. And it is only through the glory that He'll manifest Himself through you. See, it's not him showing you off. It's him showing the church off. Right? Whenever people get healed of cancer and you lay hands on them, you know, <laughs> it's not you. You didn't have the ability to do that. It's the power of God on you. The manifestation of God, the glory of Jesus coming on you. When you say, Father, in the name of Jesus, we speak healing to this person. What is it? It's the glory of God that comes on you. It's not you. You can't. You can't raise an ant from the ground from the dead. Amen. It takes the glory of God. 
And, and so talking about the glory, let's look at something. Go with me to Isaiah, the sixth chapter. Listen to what it says, the sixth chapter. We're there. Jesus found his ministry, found his glory, found his working. And from that moment on, just he took off soared above the heavens and, and did the work of the Lord. And now he's seated at the right hand of our Father. Amen. Listen to what it says in Isaiah, the sixth chapter, verse one. I want you to see this. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw also the Lord sitting upon a throne. This is the prophet now. I saw the Lord sitting upon the throne, high and lifted up. And his train filled the temple. Verse 2. Above it stood the seraphim one. Each one had six wings. With twain he covered his face. And with twain he covered his feet. And with twain he did fly. Verse 3. And one cried unto another one. And said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. Now, verse 4, and the post of the door moved, and the voice of him that cried, and the house was filled with smoke. Smoke here is his presence. It's not the place on fire or the sacrifices that were taking place was his presence. But Isaiah, what he saw, he saw one another worshiping and praising him, saying, holy, holy is the Lord. They cried, holy, holy is the Lord. Listen to this. In praise, there is the presence of God. Have you ever noticed that the enemy will first take your praise from you? Have you ever noticed that sometimes if you praise God in the midst of problems, it, it does something to you. It, it brings breakthrough. It causes you to, to break forth into glorious times with God. I'm telling you, you ought to always praise God. But here we find something that as they praise God and they said, holy, say it with me, holy, 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 holy is the Lord of hosts. Now, here's the key. The whole earth was full of his glory. It didn't say only the praisers were full of the glory, but it says the whole earth was filled with his glory. Now, let's, start, let's, see, let's see something here now. Why would the whole earth be full of his glory? Why would the whole earth be full of his glory? Because God's desire is to manifest himself on earth. Now think about it. God's desire is to manifest his presence on earth. Now, let's think about this for a moment. How will God manifest his presence on earth? How will he do that? Through you and me. The more that we allow his presence to manifest in us, the more the glory is filled among the earth. The more, uh, listen, I got revelation of something when I was sitting at our pastor's meeting years ago. He said this, there's enough power in every church, power in every church to, make, to bring change into their city. And I looked at Pastor Christine and I said, that's mine. I want Oklahoma City to be changed. I'm tired of this mess. I'm tired of these tornadoes. I'm tired of earthquakes. I'm tired of, of this hail. I'm tired of fires. Come on. I'm tired of Amen. You kind of get caught me off guard, son. Hallelujah. Amen. You see, you see, this is this is this is this is where we live. This is where we live. I don't want this mess in this city. I don't want the devil to laugh and say, ha, 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 I'm taking more people out. No, it's not God that brings destruction. Don't ever think that God brings destruction. God never does that. It, it, it'll, it'll, it'll contradict the word of God if we start believing that. It is the devil that does this to the earth by people opening up the door. Now, if you study everything that's happened in this city, you, you know, there has to be a root issue. There has to be root issues. It just doesn't happen overnight. There's root issues. And in fact, Christine did, Christi, Pastor Christine did a study of all these earthquakes that have been happening. In every epic center, there's a problem in that area. In every epic center, wherever there is an earthquake that it originates from, wherever the heart of it is, there's a problem. It's a root issue. 
And so we as people of God have to recognize that what can I do, God, to change Oklahoma City? I'm not talking about being a mayor. I'm not talking about being a councilman. I'm talking about greater than these things, greater than a state legislator. I'm talking about greater than the governor. What can I do, Father, to change it? The key is to have his glory manifest on earth through you. That's the key. You see what I'm saying? That's why there's internal warfare going on. Warfare among yourselves, among your family, among the church. uh, You know, among, oh Jesus, uh, how can I tell you? Have you ever noticed that? Warfare. Uh, You know, uh, you have to be wise, church. Whenever there is a warfare among your immediate family, whenever there's strife within your immediate family, there's a sign that something's off balance. There's a sign that Satan has come. Whenever there's, a, there's an internal issue in your marriage or your finance, hey, listen, it's not normal to have problems financially in your marriages. It's not prob- that's not a problem. That's, how can I say? It? It's a problem to have these things. And so we have to recognize that these things work for, for our benefit when we have the manifestations of God. Now, in this case, we find that the glory of God was there. Look at Isaiah, uh, go with me to Isaiah 60. Go with me to Isaiah 60. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's go back to Isaiah 60. Hallelujah. Amen. Look what it says in verse 1. I love this. I preach this and I love it. Hallelujah. Isaiah 60 verse 1. Arise and shine for the light is come. Arise, shine, light has come. The glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. You see, you see the, the connection here. When you arise with God, then it is seen upon you. The glory of God is upon you. Right? Hallelujah. Amen. For behold darkness, verse 2, before behold darkness shall cover the earth. And we're seeing that. Gross darkness, the people, we're seeing that. But the Lord shall arise upon thee, and his glory shall be seen upon thee. Oh, that tells me there's hope in the midst of problems. There's hope in the midst of darkness. There's hope in the midst of political anguish. There's hope in the midst of war. There's hope in the midst of just racial discrimination or whatever. There's hope. There's hope. When it gets darker out there, I get brighter. When it gets darker out there, I get brighter. When it gets really bad out there, you get really good. Hallelujah. Amen. Come on, church. I'm using some simple language here. Hallelujah. Amen. You get good. You get better. You get good as good as good or gooder. Hallelujah. Amen. Come on, church. Oklahoma. Is that the way you talk in Oklahoma? Gooder? Amen. No? Okay. All right. Amen. How gooder? Come on, Brother Bo. Help me out, Brother Bo. You got to teach this Chicago and Californian, uprooted and Texan, hallelujah, out in Oklahoma, right? Amen. It gets gooder. (laughs) Amen. I love it. It gets gooder. More gooder. (laughs) Amen. Praise God. Amen. Sister, you were an English teacher, weren't you? (laughs) Amen. I love it. She's my best critic. She likes to pray for me. Amen. Hallelujah. So in other words, ladies and gentlemen, we're headed for some greater things. Greater things. I'm telling you, we're headed for some greater things. Pastor, how do you know? Simple. The Word says it. If you read the Word, you would know it too. Hallelujah. Amen. It doesn't take a prophet to say that. It's getting gooder and gooder and gooder. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. Go with me to Haggai now. Haggai. We're talking about some prophets here. These are some pretty tough prophets. You don't play around with these guys. These are some really serious people here. Hallelujah. Amen. Now notice what it says in Haggai. Can't find Haggai. Are you, are, is Haggai still around here? Amen. All right. He's, he's somewhere around here. There, no, he's not there yet. There he is. Haggai. Look at Haggai. Haggai, the second chapter. This is another prophet speaking, speaking, speaking 520 years before Jesus Christ would come. This, this prophet spoke this in chapter 2, verse 9. Listen to what it says. The glory. The glory. I get excited. Amen. The glory. Of this latter house shall be greater than the former, saith the Lord of hosts. And in this place will I give peace, saith the Lord of hosts. Listen, you can go to the bank with that. You want peace? What's it going to take? The glory of God. The manifestations of God. 
But notice what he said. He said, there was once this glory that was present that was awesome. There was once this glory that was awesome and present. But he's saying, that is nothing compared to the one that's coming. Come on, Drew. You ought to say amen. Amen. Now, in other words, can I say it this way? Uh, uh, Brother Russell, when I cooked you a steak for breakfast for the men's fishing trip, that's nothing compared to the one that's coming. Hallelujah. Amen. Come on, church. Hallelujah. Amen. He ought to say amen. Amen. Ribeye coming. That was sirloin. This one's ribeye. Amen. Come on, church. The way it was back then in the days of the prophets, in the days of, of old, oh, there was glory. There was glory. There was glory. But I'm telling you, Jeff, the Bible promises there's a glory that's coming to us and us, the world, that is going to bring glory unto God. And it is the church. Come on, church. It is the church. Hallelujah. Amen. That's you and me. The church. You have been bought by the blood of of Jesus Christ and he calls you the church you the church he didn't call my little Louie the church he didn't call your doggy the church he called you the church come on church that, that ought to make you walk prideful holy pride if I may say that it's scriptural you ought to walk with your head up saying father I thank you that the glory is on me look at your neighbor right now and say I want the glory on you Amen. Tell your neighbor, I want the glory on you. Now, come on, church. That's confessions of a confessor that confesses the word of God. Come on, church. Amen. Hallelujah. In other words, it's going to get better. Hallelujah. Amen. Oh, verse 6. For thus saith the Lord. Verse 6. Come on, church. Thus saith the Lord, yet once it is a little while, and I will shake the heavens and the earth, and the sea and the dry land. Oh, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. See, the shaking has to happen. Now, let me just say this. There has to be some shakings in your life. Shaking so that you can recognize that's nothing but mess. Now, shaking to a born-again believer is simply saying, Father, just go ahead and do it. Use me, Lord. And he'll start taking some stuff off you. He'll start removing some stuff off you. I remember those things that he removed off me. They were not worth it. They were, they're not worth it to compare to the glory that's coming. It's not worth it. Church, if God is stripping some stuff off you, just enjoy it. Just say, thank you, Father. You see something in me. Amen. And see, we don't realize the value that you have. You don't realize the value that you have in God. God sees diamonds. We see darkness. Amen. The diamond. Do you have a diamond? Do you have a diamond on you don't have a diamond, brother Russell, get her a diamond. Oh, you got a diamond? Get her a diamond. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. That's a diamond? All right. Uh, all right. That's a good diamond. That's a good diamond. Uh, listen, listen. That diamond there cost. It cost. I'm just joking. Get her a diamond. Uh, uh, do you got another diamond? Does anybody got another diamond over here? No diamonds here? You got a diamond? Do you got a diamond? Oh, my goodness. That's a diamond there. That, that's a rock. Amen. Now, let me tell you something. That, that, that diamond there just didn't happen overnight. Let's go study that diamond. Go find out who actually, where did this diamond come from? Where did this rock come from? What was the making of that rock? How much fire did it take that rock to go through? How much pain did it go through? How much did it go through for her to enjoy it? There was more involved in that. Hallelujah. Amen. Oh, she enjoys that. Amen. Think about what God sees in you. He sees in you. He wants to show you off, but he can't show you off because you don't, you're still like that dark cave rock coal in the mud amen he wants you to come like a diamond just like you're wearing that diamond just like you're wearing that diamond he wants that diamond on you so the world can see the manifestations on you hallelujah amen come on church. manifestations on you like that diamond amen hallelujah amen all righty now notice what it says go with me to J joel the second chapter joel the second chapter you know, <laughs> let, me, let me say this. We may not see the beauty in one another now, but you got to see it by faith. Because see, you're the body of Christ. And who am I to see you're not the body of Christ? Oh, you may have some areas that are 
that are rough. You may have some areas that are unpleasant to others. You may have some areas that just doesn't seem like could be. But who am I and who are you not to see them the way Jesus wants to see them? Amen. See, it's the glory of God that wants to be manifested. The darker it gets out there, the brighter you and I become. The uglier it gets out there, the taller and stronger and bigger do we get. Hallelujah. Amen. Oh, the, the more that there's a dying world out there, the more they want to see life. They, they're tired of death. Death doesn't want to see death. Death wants to see life. Think about it. People, don't, people really don't want to die. Do you know that? People really do not want to die. You can get an atheist and put a gun to his, and he'll say, oh, please do not kill me. I'll believe what you believe, right? You see, no one wants to die. Always, everybody wants to reach for life, 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 life. There is a world out there that is dying spiritually, death by death, piece by piece, uh, piece by piece, and whatever's taking place, they're dying. So it's the church that has to manifest the glory of God, the brightness of His glory, so that they can be attracted to the house of God, be attracted to the ministry of God, be attracted to the worship of God. Come on, church. I want you to attract people to the things of God. I want the world to see, oh my God, you're so happy. You're so full of God. You have life. You're smiling. Uh, you're, you don't suck a prune or a, a lemon like they do out there. You don't suck a, a green pomegranate apple you, or a green apple. You, you suck, oh my God, you suck Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. If I may say it that way. Amen. Amen. You see what I'm saying? It, it's, all about, it's all about life in us. Life in us. Where are we going, uh, Brother Russell? See, see, if Bo was here, I'd be asking him. So that means you guys got to stay sharp. Amen. Joel, go to the book of Joel. Hallelujah. Look at me shaking up here. Woo, Jesus. I love it when I start shaking. You, do you see that? You see that? I can't even carry a pager. Oh, my God. Amen. Joel, the second chapter. Look at it again. Joel, the second chapter, verse 21. Listen to what it says. Fear not, O land. Oh, fear not, O land, be glad and rejoice, for the Lord will do, all together, great things. Tell your neighbor, great things. Great things. Be not afraid, you beasts of the field, for the pastures of the wilderness do spring, for the tree beareth her fruit, the fig tree, the vine do yield their strength. Verse 23, be glad then, ye children of Zion. Rejoice in the Lord your God. For he hath given you, now here's the key, the former rain moderately, and will cause to come down for you the rain, the former rain, the latter rain in the first month. Now, now notice this. Isn't it amazing now how Joel uses the glory as an illustration of rain? Now, if you were a farmer, this would mean much to you. If you were a farmer and you had uh, 150 acres that you just planted, you want some rain. Right? You want some rain. Like recently we've been having some, some droughts last year. You don't like the drought. That will destroy your livelihood. You want rain. But there's something about rain that can come as in a sprinkle, which is good. But there's something about a rain that just continues, just keeps coming down and down. Not fast, not flood-like, but just enough to get the ground full of moisture. He said this, the way it was, it rained once. But there's coming a rain, church. Now, you get a hold of this. There's coming a rain. Parchness is going to leave. I'm talking about spiritual parchness is going to leave. That means the more the rain of his presence on you, the more, oh, think about it. Oh, gee, how many of y'all use moisturizer every day? I, I, my wife is a killer about that stuff. Boy, she just jumps me every time. She didn't put any on me today, but I'll tell you what. Listen, when you don't have moisturizer on your body, I can tell the difference. I can shave Jeff, Jeff's hand. No moisture there. <laughs> I'm just joking. Amen. I'm just joking. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen, Brother Russell. G give me your hand. Hey, oh, yeah. Oh, no, dry, dry there. Dry there. <laughs> give him some moisturizer. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Have you ever noticed that you can shake people's hand? Uh, g shake me your hand. Give me your hand, please. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Amen. Oh, yeah, yeah. I can See, have you ever noticed these women are totally different than men, right? <laughs> Well, you know, why? Have you ever seen women, the first thing they do in the morning? 
<laughs> I mean, it's like, it's like they're constantly working on it, you know. <laughs> it's like, honey, you ready? Not yet. <laughs> hey, man. I mean, there are some things they moisturize. And, oh, my God. My, oh, amen. Amen. They, they're busy, right? But a guy doesn't think like that. He said the rain of the past was like that moisturizer. You just needed this so and so much, so much. But there's a rain coming. There's a rain coming. There's a rain coming. There's a rain coming. There's a rain coming that's going to flood the dry ground. It's going to flood you like never before. There's a rain coming that everything you say is going to plant. Everything you say is going to happen. Everything you touch is going to blossom. Everything. Oh, come on, church. You can tell a neighbor, neighbor, I'm praying for you now. Father, I pray that my neighbor is blessed. Bam, wham. Blessings hit that neighbor like never before. That's coming, church. <laughs> Amen. I, you know, I told my wife yesterday she was making me a sloppy joke. What was that you were making me yesterday? <laughs> Amen. And listen to this. There was a text that came through and said, Pastor, from Texas, would you pray for me? I have symptoms like flu. And I thought about it. I said, okay, I'll pray. I sent him a, a message. I sent him a text. I prayed for him. And do you know what? Right after that text went out, boom. Healing came to his life. Wow. I'm telling you, this is what's happening now. This is what's happening now. You get a hold of the word of God. You speak the word over your life, over your finances, over your family. You'll see the breakthrough, the manifestation. Listen, listen, I'm excited when these things happen. My, my cell phone is running just high with people that want prayer. And I told my wife, I walked into the living room, I said, honey, this is God. This is God that people know that when we pray, miracles happen. When we pray, things happen. Come on, church. How many of you have ever been on the prayer chain? And wham, 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 you got healed, delivered, set free, hallelujah. Amen. It wasn't pastor. It was the manifestation of his glory. What does that do? What did that do to that old brother in Texas that had the flu-like symptoms yesterday? Today, he's worshiped the Lord in church right. saying, Oh, Father, I thank you. I thank you that your glory healed me. I know what it... You, you don't want to talk about when you have flu-like symptoms? Have you ever noticed that flu-like symptom when they get on your body? Boy, I'm telling you, it's rough. And now the deliverance happened. Why? Because, see, this is the promise. Just let's look at it again. Listen to what it says. Hallelujah. The Bible says here, oh, Jesus, it says here that... Be glad then, ye children of Zion. That's the children of Israel, the children of the Lord. Rejoice in the Lord for your God, for he hath given you the former rate moderately. I want to show you something. That word moderately is, is restricted. That word moderately, if I, if I may look at it this way, it's a restriction. It's a restriction that, that he holds back. There is a rain that was restricted. There was a rain that was held back. But now there is a rain that's coming. And if you get a hold of this, it's a greater, greater rain. It's more than it was. It's more than it was. Picture that. In your heart, I'm walking in the greater manifestation of the Lord this year. Can you get that? I'm walking in the greater manifestations of the Lord. Hallelujah. Can, can you say amen? amen? Now, now notice this. Go with me to John, the 14th chapter. Oh, Jesus. See, you need this. I, I need this. If I'm going to walk in this anointing from God, I need this in my life. That means I'm going to allow God to work on me. Just work on me. Work on me, God. <laughs> Work on me, God. I'm not talking about working on them. They've got their own deal. They've they got their own business. But work on me, God. I want more of you. Look what it says in John 14, 12. Now, let me read it to you. Let me read it to you from the Message Bible. Let's look at John 14, 11. Come on, church. John 14, 11. Hallelujah. Amen. Listen to what it says. I'm going to read it to you from the Message Bible. Jesus said this. Notice what he says. Believe me. Verse 11, John 14, believe me, I am in the Father and my Father is in me. If you can't believe that, believe what you see, these works. Let me just stop here for a moment. It's the work that you'll manifest in this day that people will believe. They're tired of he hearing, I'm a Christian. They're tired of hearing, you shouldn't be doing this. You shouldn't be doing this. They're tired of hearing that. I believe what they need to see now is manifestations of God in you. Amen. 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 They have to see the miraculous in you. The joy, the peace, the laughter. 
You know, you don't realize how many people are watching you. You don't realize how many people out there purposely watching you. Why me, Pastor? It's because they see something in you that they don't see in others. They see something in you. It's different. It's lovely. It's presentable. It's astonishing. It's, I want that kind of attitude. I want that feeling. That's what they're seeing in you. It's the manifestation of God. It's not your beauty. Not your new hairdo. Not your new clothes. Not the new pierced on your lip. Amen. It's the glory of God on you, right? Listen to what it says. The Bible says, believe me, I am in the Father and my Father is in you. If you can't believe that, believe what you see these works. The person who trusts me will not only do what I'm doing, but even greater things. How's that possible? Let's stop here. How's that possible? How can I, according to this scripture, do greater things than Jesus? How's that possible? You know what it is? The glory, the manifestation, the rain that's coming. See, the rain will come and it'll pass you by if you still live in that moderately, moderately rain. If you're still living in the past glory, you know, you know what I'm talking about? The past glory. If we don't recognize that that new glory will come and we'll see it'll go and you'll say, I want to be in it. I want to be in it. Well, you should be in it. And there is this, how can this be? How can, I had to interrupt this for a moment. How can that be, Jesus? Listen, the person who trusts me will only do what I am doing, but even greater things because I, on my way to the Father, I am giving you the same work to do that I've been doing. You, can't, you can count on it. From now on, whatever you request along the lines of who I am and what I'm doing, I'll do it. That's how the Father will be seen for who He is in the Son. I mean it. Whatever you request, whatever you request in this, I will do it. Do you see the promise of God? I promise you, I will do it. Look at me, everyone look at me first. Look at this promise. I promise you, Jesus says, I promise you, Jesus says, I will do it. Now, now, I don't know about you, but that's a pretty good promise to believe and lay hold on. And the Bible says, he's not the son of man that he should lie, nor the son of man that he should repent. There's no lie in Jesus. There's no guile in Jesus. Oh, you and me may mess up a while and lie a little here, but we have to repent quickly. But listen to this. He can't lie. He can never lie. If he said, believe, if, if you don't believe me, then at least believes the works. I, I believe the works. Do you know that? I believe the works. When I hear people get prayed for and get healed, I believe Jesus did it. I had no part in that Jesus I thank God you did it, Jesus. Right? I believe it. But now notice this. Now, if you believe it, then trust him. He'll do it in you. Trust him. He say, please trust me. I'll do it in you. Whatever you do along the line that benefits my father, he'll do it for you. Man, come on, church. Whatever you ask God, if it benefits the father, he'll do it for you. Hallelujah. Amen. Come on, church. It's not about self any longer. It's not about our own glory any longer. It's not about me. It's about Jesus. Jesus. Jesus working me so that they can believe and they can see you in me. Oh, he'll do it, Jesus. He'll do it. Come on, church. He'll do it. See, see, it's more than just a, Reading it and saying, hooray. It's about saying, man, God, I take that promise seriously. God, I'll do it. I'll do it. Come on, church. See, see, we're living in a time that he's positioning us. I, I told you years ago, the line is drawn in the sand. And, and when I said that, I said, wow, that's strong. But it is so true. The line is drawn in the sand. Either you're going to believe the works that I do and believe that I will do them. Or either won't believe and you know i feel for people that won't believe because see there's nothing i can do as a pastor there's nothing i can't make you believe i can only give you the truth and it's up to you to choose i mean i can't put a gun a 40 caliber now that jason has one a 40 caliber and say jeff look at me jeff believe i can't do that Amen. But I can sure say, Jeff, this is what the Bible says. And all we have to do is say, amen. 
Amen. Say with me, amen. Can you say amen? I'm excited, church. Come on, church. Amen. Look at, look at what it says in 1 Corinthians. Let's go to 1 Corinthians, all right? Are you okay, guys? Amen. See, the glory has to be revealed in us. Listen to what it says in 1 Corinthians, the second chapter. Oh, Jesus is so good. A friend of mine was, was going home from work and, and uh, picked up a hitchhiker. It was a girl. He thought he was helping her. Picked up a hitchhiker with two guys in it. They threw him in the middle of the truck. The guy drove. The girl was at the door and the other guy, and they put a gun in his head. And uh, you're, he says, you're a dead man. I guess he picked up at that time in the natural was wrong hitchhiker. But anyway, he picked up this hitchhiker. And when he said, you're a dead man, he said, you can't. He said I, to the effect that uh, you can't kill a dead man or a living man or something like that. And boom. He said, Pastor, I literally saw. If anybody tells you this, you'll not believe it. I literally saw the bullet. I literally saw the bullet come out of that chamber. He said it was a blast so bright, but yet the pain was so horrendous that the pain blew my neck back, broke the truck, and I felt blood. I just felt the hot blood. And I thought I was dying, so I just laid on that lady's shoulder acting dead. Pulled over, threw him out on the grass of the side of the freeway and left. Some passenger picked him up, took him to the hospital. And, and they did an x-ray, couldn't find the bullet. The next day he comes to my office. I mean, he's like a mummy. His head was huge. He had just things all over and walked in there and said, Pastor, Pastor, Pastor. I said, what in the world happened? He said, Pastor, man, I didn't die. And he told me what happened. Man, we rejoiced. I said, listen, listen, I know guns. That's not possible in the natural. Do you know what this bone is? It's cartilage. That, that, that cartilage, there, literally, when it penetrates that big gun, that that bullet that will penetrate literally will just rip right open right there and literally just blow out his brains, the back of his head and everything. So we praise God, right? They stole his truck. Three weeks later, they found the truck. He said, Pastor, will you go with me? Because I knew tow trucks and I knew people that worked in these truck places. And I said, yes, sir, let's go get your truck. We went, pulled out his pocket knife and went digging in that radio and found the slug found the slug he pulled out that big slug right above the ray where the clock set pulled out that slug and said oh we cried in that wrecking yard we cried oh god you're so good you protected my brother you protected him lord oh and he said pastor manifestations of his glory i said that's exactly what it was you see you see how the glory is so powerful in our lives how we need it amen and so we find here that Jesus says, greater works will you do if you just believe me and allow me to use you. If you ask anything that lines up with my father, the plan of my father, the will of my father, I'll do it and my father will do it. Man, I'm telling you what, why not hook up with Jesus today and say, Father, I'm going to choose to hook up with you. That's a promise to my life. Amen. Hallelujah. Listen to what it says. Go with me to, uh, 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 second, we're, let's go to 1 Corinthians, right? We didn't read that, right? Andrew, I mean, uh, Russell? Saying, uh, for, 1 Corinthians, the second chapter. Hallelujah. I'm getting all excited up here. 1 Corinthians, the second chapter, verse 9. Listen to what it says. But it is written, it is written. Whenever you find that, that means it's in the Word. In fact, Isaiah 64, 4. It says, it is written, I have not seen nor heard, neither have entered into the heart of man. Now get a hold of this. The things which God, which God hath, past tense, prepared for them that love him. Underline or circle the word things. Those things are not things that you think. It's heavenly things. Listen to what it says. He says here, if I can read it this way, he says, as it is written, I have not seen nor ears heard, neither have entered into the hearts of man the heavenly things which God hath already prepared for him, for him that love him. And notice it's very clearly, you, it's a love thing here. It's a love relationship here. You love me, I love you, and you'll, you'll see my manifestations in you. I'm not talking about, I'm not talking about just, just, just love that, that, you know, that, that you can say out of the heart and don't mean it. How many people know that? That's possible, right? So in other words, the more that I love God, the more He shows me. The more I trust Him, He shows me the heavenly things. 
Heavenly things, right? Heavenly things. Amen. Can you say amen? Heavenly things. Amen. Let's go to one more scripture and then we'll finish this uh, if we have to uh, uh, later on. Amen. Go with me to Psalms. Hallelujah. Amen. Psalms. Oh, he's so good. Say with me. Oh, he's so good. All right. Psalms 72. 72. Praise God. Hallelujah. It's the heavenly glory that's coming to us. We're moving into this new realm. Hallelujah. Amen. Uh, Psalms. Hallelujah. 72. 6. The Bible says. Listen to what it says. He shall come down like rain upon the mown grass as snow as showers that water the earth. Verse 7. In his days shall the righteous flourish and abundance of peace so long as the moon endureth. And notice this. Who is he talking about? Now, here it's a type figure of the Lord, which he's talking about the figure like David, like, like Samson that came. The gloriousness of Samson, the gloriousness of David, but now he's saying he, like the branch of Samson, like the branch of David, will come and water the grass like a lawn that has been fresh mown. Now, now Bo, Bo understands this. He likes to cut grass. After you cut grass, what is the first thing one does? Likes to turn on the, the, the sprinklers. Right? Why do they turn on the sprinklers, Bo? Why, 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 why? Come on, give us a lesson here. Get, no, no, get, give us a lesson here, Bo. Give us a lesson here. Why do we do that? Can I tell you why? Maybe you don't know this. Maybe you saw other people do this, but let me give you the, the, the true meaning of that, Bo, should, should know this. If you ever cut a blade, what happens to that blade by, if, what happens to that blade of grass that's hit by that mower? I'm talking about if you have a dull mower, it'll rip that grass. Have you ever seen the edge of a, it's all sh just, just jagged? You get a fresh blade on it, it's like, right? So in other words, God says, I'm going to water that grass. Even though it's been cut pretty hard, even though it's been jagged, even though it's been run rough, even though it didn't have a sharp sickle, even though it might have been ripped, I'm going to water it. I'm going to water it. I'm going to water Come on, is anybody getting this drift right? He's going to water you. He's going to water me. And he said, I'm going to water as long as the moon and the sun remain. Now, now y'all ought to shout and be dancing with me about this. Come on, church. Am I preaching to the Lutheran? Amen. <laughs> You ought to jump and shout, hallelujah, come on, hallelujah, I'm going to get a shout of you guys, hallelujah, I want the world to hear, hallelujah, man, that's a promise, that's why they water grass, that's why I water my grass, I want my grass to be healthy and green and looking nice after a jagged cut, <laughs> Hallelujah, amen, especially if you don't know how to sharpen your blade too well, right? See, the jaggedness of life comes on our lives. You know what I'm talking about? You know, like Monday morning when you go to work. How many people have ever illustrated that they hit their job on Monday? Has anybody ever had an attitude like, <sighs> some are going, no, yeah, I know, I know some, I, I, I enjoy my job. But I understand. I was there when I had to go. <sighs> Monday morning. <laughs> Amen. Monday morning. I know. I know that happens to all of us. But I believe that if we believe, if we allow God to manifest his glory on us, we'll get up Monday morning in his presence. Say, Father, I thank you for this day. I have a mission field to go to. I have a mission field. It's a beautiful mission field. Oh, Jesus, I thank you. See, when you turn that around that way, that's watering your life. It gives you nutritious, nutritious value. You enjoy your job. I'm telling you, church, uh, jobs were not made to, to struggle. Jobs were not made to sacrifice. 
He doesn't give us, he doesn't give us the, 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 the power to have sorrow over our jobs. And in fact, if you have a little sorrow over your job, then ask God to help you with your job, right? Can you say amen? Hallelujah, amen. All right, now, 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 listen to this, listen to this. Oh, there's so much. I'm, I'm only barely started my, my message, barely started, amen. Well, I just have to finish it later on. Go with me to Ecclesiastics, and then we, pr I promise you, we'll close right after this scripture, right? Are you okay, church? Ecclesiastes, the seventh chapter, verse 10, seventh chapter, verse 10. Listen to what it say. All right? All right, here it is. I have to close on this. Ecclesiastes 7, verse 10. Say thou not, or say not thou, what is the cause that the former days were better than these? Say not thou, what is the cause that the former days were better than these? Question mark. Don't say that. You know what he's, you know what he's simply saying right here? There is a move coming that has to come. It has to come. Excuse me. It rained last year, or it rained last time. The glory was greater, but this is better. So let's focus now on this glory that's coming. Let's don't talk about the one that was. It was a good one. It was recorded. It was well, but we can't live there. I can't live on yesterday's glory. I can't live on yesterday's promises. Oh, I thank, for the, I thank God for that. I thank you. I once broke my knee and got healed and, and delivered. And I'll go back to Hawaii and do a surf again. Amen. Hallelujah. I'll, I'll do it again. Amen. I'll do it again. Amen. But now I'm looking forward for what's ahead of me. I'm looking forward to what's ahead of me. Amen. Church. Let's get a hold of that today. The former glory was good. But there's a glory that's coming. There's a glory that's coming. Amen. Get ready, church. Get ready for that glory that's coming. In your lives. In your lives. Get ready. In your lives. Pastor, you're just saying that to make me feel good. No, I'm not, I'm not doing this to make you feel good. It's the word of God. It's coming. It's coming. It's coming. It's coming. It's coming. Get in it. Amen. It's here. Uh, amen, brother. I got it on me right now. Hallelujah. Amen. <laughs> amen. It's here. The glory, the manifestation of his glory. Wait, listen, wait till people start saying, wow, we just prayed about that since you last week. Wow, and that's it. Wow. Amen. Point of no return. You come this far, you can't go back. Amen. The bamboo shoot is top running and climbing. Amen. It's there. You just get a hold of it. Now on the other end, we can walk away from it. And we'll be talked about what the Word says. We'll be those that have once were hot and became cold. And left. And then we know what it says in Revelation about that. But I want you hot. I don't want you cold. I don't want you lukewarm. I want you hot. Oh, Jesus. What do we do, church? Just get into his word more. Receive more and work on, you know, really it's a work in, it's a work in progress. You know, flesh is, is flesh. It has its problems. You know, things have its problems. What do we do? Well, do you knock that out. Say, no, I once was angry all the time. I choose not to be that way. I was once selfish. I choose not to be that way. I was one unconsidered. I, you know what I'm saying? I, I choose not to be that way. I was one rebellious. I choose not to be that way. See, it's, we're all working in progress. We're works in progress. Amen. The cop-out is where you're trying to think I'm perfect. <laughs> Look at me, everybody. Yes, God wants you perfect. Hallelujah. Amen. Have you ever heard that? He wants you perfect. Well, pastor, we can never be perfect in these days. Well, the Bible says, as you grow like Christ, you become more like him into the fullness of his statue, into the perfect man. Oh, Jesus. Oh, we're there. We're there. We're there. Amen. We're there. Come on. Go ahead and stand up. Give the Lord a praise. Amen. <laughs>